morning. My name is Jane Minter, and I'm one of the neuro-oncologists in the brain tumor program at CHOP. And today, I'm going to talk a little bit about what, what's new in pediatric chemotherapy. And I probably should have amended that title because what's new is not always chemotherapy-based. So I, I, I should probably say what's new in pediatric therapies. So why do we separate pediatric brain tumors from adults? Well, I think I don't need to go through this slide in detail, but I think it's obviously clear that pediatric brain tumors are different from adults. And in the past, we've relied on scientific advances and therapy advances in adults to trickle down to us in pediatrics. But it's clear from studying both at the molecular level, like Dr. Storm was talking about, as well as at the imaging and histologic level, that the types of tumors that children get are very different from adults, and they need to be treated as a separate entity. So that's our goal as pediatric neurosurgeons and neuro-oncologists and um, radiation oncologists, is to really treat this as a separate disease, because it is. Now, I did say that some of the newer advances are not necessarily chemotherapy-based, but I don't want to discount the incredible role that chemotherapy has had in improving our outcomes uh, in children with brain tumors. And this is just a, a slide with data on it from medulloblastoma. Like Dr. Storm said, that tumor in the back of the brain, that's the most common cancerous tumor in kids. And just to show that chemotherapy has had a huge impact on survival and will <laughs> still be part of our backbone of th in therapy. And this just shows that in the 30s and early 40s, when kids were treated just with surgery or just with surgery and local radiation, there were no long-term survival survivors. But as we improved radiation techniques and as we added chemotherapy and refined our approach to chemotherapy, our survival is where it is now at about 85% for a standard risk kid with medulloblastoma getting multimodality therapy. And while this is a tremendous progress over um, these decades, it's not good enough. So we're not happy with these results, and we're continuing to um, uh, study and, and um, try to make new advances. So why does chemotherapy work on these tumors? Well, classic um, cytotoxic chemotherapy kills rapidly dividing cells. It doesn't discriminate between the normal or the tumor cells that are rapidly dividing. It's non-targeted. But it does kill cancer cells because cancer cells do divide rapidly. They grow uncontrollably. They don't respect the normal checkpoints um, that other cells um, respond to to stop dividing. And they spread and metastasize to other tissues. Again, they don't respect the normal anatomical boundaries that other um, cells in the body respond to. So that's why um, cancer cells do respond to cytotoxic chemotherapy. But as many of you well know, um, there's collateral damage from chemotherapy. And some of the common chemotherapy toxicities that we see are due to the fact that there are other normal cells in the body that rapidly divide like cancerous tumor cells. And these first three um, categories of toxicity are due to the fact that blood counts divide, uh, blood cells divide rapidly, um, the cells that line your um, gut and uh, stomach divide rapidly, and hair cells divide rapidly. So those are all affected by chemotherapy. Uh, we certainly have treatments for these, but it's still a toxicity that we'd like to minimize or avoid. And then other side effects that are related to the, some of the common drugs that we use in neuro-oncology, again, are due to the fact that our classic cytotoxic chemotherapy damage normal cells in addition to the tumor cells. So again, we're not satisfied with that 84%. Um, and we're constantly looking for new treatment approaches for pediatric tumors. Um, the goal of a new treatment approach is to improve effectiveness. Like I said earlier, the prognosis for children with brain tumors has improved dramatically over the past four days, but it's still uh, four decades, but it's still not optimal. Um, we're not going to be satisfied until we're curing 100% of children. So one approach that Dr. Storm alluded to is targeted therapy. And can we improve uh, tumor cell kill and spare normal tissues by um, targeting tumor cells? And in order to do that, we need to understand the difference between the tumor cells and the normal surrounding brain cells. And one way to do that is to 
um, look for tumor-specific or tumor-unique cell surface molecules that we can use to discriminate tumor cells um, from the normal cells in the brain. We can also look for tumor-specific cell signaling pathways, and signaling pathways, you'll he hear me allude to a number of times, that's the way that cells communicate with each other and communicate with their environment. And then finally, we can look for tumor-specific genetic mutations that we can then target with therapy. And our hope with these new treatment approaches is to not just Im uh, improve the effectiveness, but al also to decrease the toxicity. So these are some of the newer treatment strategies we and others that take care of children with brain tumors are um, uh, approaching. One, and I, again, I go back to chemotherapy because it will always be a backbone of our treatment. But one way that we are um, using chemotherapy is to intensify it in a select population of very young children to limit the radiation dose. We know that radiation and chemotherapy, in addition to surgery, are the backbone of treatment. But we're trying to manipulate both radiation and our use of chemotherapy to improve outcomes and to, again, always try to uh, minimize side effects. Another tr new treatment strategy is using the immune system, so harnessing the power of our own immune system to treat and fight tumors. Um, we're also targeting abnormal tumor blood vessels. We've come to recognize that the blood vessels that tumors use to feed them nutrients and oxygen and allow them to grow and metastasize are different from normal blood vessels in the body, and so that's a unique target that we can use for therapy. And then again, I'll come back to identifying unique molecular tumor targets and unique or abnormal tumor signaling pathways as part of our new treatment strategies. And I'll just go through these briefly. So why would we intensify chemotherapy when I just told you there are all these side effects that we're trying to avoid? Where in some very young children whose tumors would best be treated by chemotherapy and radiation, we found by following survivors that the neurocognitive effects of large radiation fields and doses in very young children are quite devastating. So um, our goal with this approach is to limit the radiation exposure without compromising survival. And Dr. Hill Kaiser will be giving a whole talk on how her group has um, modified and advanced newer radiation techniques to achieve this goal. But from the oncologist standpoint, we're using intensified chemotherapy to, again, limit some of the radiation exposure. We currently at CHOP have two open clinical trial protocols for the children's oncology group. Again, for a select patient, our very youngest patients, less than three years of age, with these two different tumor types. And it involves uh, sequential, rapid, repeated cycles of high-dose chemotherapy with autologous stem cell support. And the advance here is that giving stem cells back, giving a child their own stem cells back, allows us to give them maximal doses of chemotherapy, but limit some of the toxicity by rescuing them with their own stem cells. And that's an ongoing approach for our very young children. A second newer approach in neuro-oncology is using the immune system to treat tumors. Uh, this is something that has been studied for quite some time in adults, but is newer in pediatrics. And in order to do this, we need to identify unique proteins on tumors called tumor antigens and direct or educate the patient's own immune system to target and kill these antigen-expressing tumor cells. Now, as we're learning more and more about tumors, we are finding out that tumors are smart and they've learned how to evade the normal immune system. So one approach to this is creating a tumor vaccine. And this is more of a passive approach whereby a common tumor surface antigens that, that um, many people express are used to create a vaccine. And patients with that tumor type are, are vaccinated with this generic tumor expressing protein vaccine. And they often get a second immune booster to kind of rev up their immune system to then recognize these tumor antigens and target and kill the tumors. And there is currently a pediatric glioma vaccine trial that we are participating in in collaboration with um, Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. And that's very early in its inception. 
And then another approach that's been pioneered at Penn and CHOP is actually engineering or educating the patient's own immune cells to fight their specific tumor. And the way that has been done is that we're actually removing patients' own blood cells, immune cells, taking them to the lab and modifying them or engineering and educating them to target their specific tumor markets, markers. Um, this is a trial that's currently open at CHOP only for leukemia at this point. We don't know if this is going to be a, a, a safe or effective approach in pediatric solid or brain tumors, but again, it's, it's a new way of thinking how to fight uh, cancers in children. And targeting tumor blood vessels has been an approach that we have been using for quite some time now. And again, I alluded to tumors create the, the uh, growth of their own new blood supply by making and releasing vascular growth signaling factors that tell blood vessels to grow into the tumors. One of these growth factors is called VEGF, something that you may have um, seen or read about. So we think that therapies that inhibit tumor blood growth may also inhibit tumor growth. And these are two current drugs that we're using in children. Avastin is a drug that you may have heard about. It's been used uh, quite some time now for many adult cancers. We're using it quite a bit in pediatric neuro-oncology. It is a protein that actually inactivates this specific growth factor, and it's often given in combination with chemotherapy to both limit the tumor blood supply and then on the back end kill those tumor cells. And this is a drug that's just new in, in um, pediatric early phase one clinical trials, and it just, it, it uses a new type of protein to actually physically block the interaction between the blood vessel growth factors and the receptors that are on that, that, those um, blood vessels. And this is currently in phase one clinical trials at CHOP, just now opening for pediatrics. So a lot of what we're looking at in new approaches um, relies on being able to identify these new molecular tumor targets. We know that mutations in genes that direct cell growth and signaling are the cause of many cancers. That's not new information. But finding those mutations in genes and the proteins that they produce has been a new initiative at CHOP. And as Dr. Storm alluded to, we're lucky at Children's to have such, such uh, support from the institution for creating this Center for Applied Genomics. Within the neuro-oncology program itself, uh, Dr. Storm alluded to, we have the Child, uh, Childhood Brain Tumor Tissue Consortium. It's an IRB-approved multi-institutional registry and repository for brain tumor tissue. So as he said, from the OR, Part of the tumor goes to the clinical pathologist to make the diagnosis, but another part goes directly to the laboratory. And each tumor undergoes high resolution whole genome sequencing to identify mutations. And this is going to be critical to our future advances because once we can match a patient's particular and personal tumor mutation, we'll be able to stratify these patients with known tumor mutations to studies. Uh, and clinical trials that actually specifically target these mutations, so a more patient-specific, personalized approach. So why is it important to target these tumor signaling pathways? I alluded to the fact that cell signaling and signal transduction is the way that tumor cells talk to each other and tell each other to grow, tell each other to proliferate, and tell each other to metastasize to other parts of the body. But we know that cell-cell signaling is important in normal development, too, as well as disease. So we need to, to sort out how we can identify those aberrant or abnormal signaling pathways from the normal signaling pathways that are important during development. We take care of kids, and we know that ch childhood, um, the children's brain develops over a long period of time, so we really need to be careful and really need to fine-tune our approach to disrupting these tumor signaling pathways. So one pathway that we're particularly interested, because it's important in the normal development of the cerebellum, that part of the brain in the back where many tumors uh, in children develop, is regulated by a pathway called the hedgehog signaling pathway. And in studying the normal development of the cerebellum, neuroscientists have found that 30% of childhood medulloblastomas also growing in that part of the brain show increased or abnormal hedgehog pathway signaling. And further investigations in preclinical models have identified mutations in certain protein members of that pathway that promote medulloblastoma formation. And so those were clear targets 
that um, our laboratory scientist colleagues have been investigating um, as targets for drug treatment. And this is just a cartoon of what that pathway looks like. Again, this is the surface of the tumor cell. This is the microenvironment around the tumor cell. Other cells releasing factors to talk to this tumor cell um, will interact with these cell surface tumor proteins. These proteins then are activated and signal into the nucleus of the tumor cell, telling that nucleus to translate genes um, and transmit further growth signals. And so um, working with drug development companies, um, we have found that there is a specific drug called Vismodigib that is um, a targeted inhibitor of this one protein member of this hedgehog pathway. And by giving um, mice and animals in preclinical models this drug, they've been sh able to show that they can actually turn off that line of communication and cell signaling and turn those <coughs> cell growth signals off and stop tumor growth. It's a drug that's given by mouse. Um, it's been shown in preclinical models and now in some adults that it suppresses that hedgehog pathway and causes tumor regression. Um, it's currently in early phase clinical trials in both adults and pediatrics. There was one single patient case report that was very encouraging in 2009 in the a New England Journal of Medicine of an adult patient who had widely disseminated medulloblastoma outside of the brain and spine throughout. Um, and after a course of this oral drug that targeted that specific tumor pathway, he went into a remission. Now this remission wasn't long lived and it tells us that targeted therapy alone is not gonna be um, the way uh, to treat all, all cancers. But it's encouraging to know that if we can identify a tumor specific pathway and shut that down, we can get results like this. Now with all new drugs, they have to be studied very cautiously and very carefully in kids and we have seen, um, again in our preclinical models, that there is the potential for effects on skeletal growth in our, our growing children. So we have to do all of this new age and testing with caution. So just in conclusion, um, brain tumors in children remain one of the leading cause of cancer-related death. Even though we are making huge advances, we're not where we want to be. But the importance of understanding the underlying biology of tumor for, uh, formation and growth may lead to new treatment targets. And we've shown that with that last um, hedgehog pathway drug. So targeting or personalizing cancer therapy to the individual patient and their tumor should improve outcomes and minimize or decrease treatment-related side effects.